and welcome back to the yellow dresser this week and next week i will be doing kind of like a part one and part two video um i'll be doing a drape on my dress form on how to get a bodice block scotty crazy cats anyway I'll be doing a drape on my dress form to show you how to get a bodice block. Now, my dress form is my size, so if you have a dress form, obviously it's going to be your size, and it's the same process, even though they are different sizes. So, to get started, you will need uh, two pieces of muslin, one for the front and one for the back. This week we'll be doing the front, next week I'll be posting the back. The piece of muslin needs to at least be 24 by 14. It can be bigger, um, but do, do try not to go any smaller than that. And of course you will need your pins and an iron and a pencil. So let's get started on how to drape the bodice block. Alright, to get started, I'll be using my L square. If you do not have an L square, that is fine. A regular ruler will work. And of course, a pencil. So, we're going to fold the fabric in half to start. Again, the measurements I'm using are 24 inches by 14 inches. Before we fold the fabric in half, be sure to draw a straight line on your fabric, maybe about an inch at the most in. Alright, and after you draw that line, we're going to make sure to, that our grain and our fabrics are straight and they aren't warped. I tore my fabric, so this will cause sometimes the grains to get unaligned. If you tore your fabric, you might want to check this. If you line it up and you can see here that it is not even. So you're simply going to grab that corner, pick it up, grab the opposite corner, and give it a nice dirty tug. Now you might have to do this a couple times to get it back on grain, but it'll line up properly once it is. Make, be sure to not over pull it as well, because then you're going to have to pull it in the opposite direction again. Once you have that done, you can fold it in half, and you can see here that I am creasing it so I know where the middle of my fabric is. Once you've got that nice and creased down, you're going to unfold your fabric. And this is, again, just to show you a little idea what your fabric is. Once we use your ruler or your L square, if you have L square, um, but your line might not line up with the actual crease that you made. So make sure you line up on that line that we drew beforehand. Here it did so happen to line up on the crease, so that was pretty nice. Next we are going to measure the apex on our fabric. So that is going to be the center front line to the very highest point of your bust. That will be the apex, is the highest point of your bust. That line, mine was three and a half inches, depending on what your dress form says or using your own body measurements, it might vary. Once you get that, make sure it's nice and dark. You can write apex on it if you need it or want to, but that is the measurement that we're gonna be using to help align this fabric on our dress form. The next step is you're gonna fold down on that line that you drew and you're just gonna iron it down so you have a nice straight surface to work with when you start pinning this to your dress form. Now to get started, we're going to pin the apex on our piece of fabric to the apex on our dress form. Again, the apex is the highest point on the dress form. Here I'm just marking it with a pin so you can see it and so that I can easily pin this without having to fight myself on where this is. I can easily feel for the pin. Once I have it pinned down, I'm just going to straighten out that line and pin it to the center front of my dress form. Once you get that pinned down, you're just going to pin down all the way across your fabric to your dress form. Make sure you keep that in the center. Here you can see the dress form is always marked by a seam running down the center of the dress form. When you get down to the waist, you're going to want to feel for the sink. 
So the waistband on dress forms is clearly marked. You can't see it here because of the uh, over thing I have on my dress form. But you can feel for it when you're moving your hand down. Your hand is going to sink into that waist. And I'm showing you here that the waistband is right there. And that's what you're going to want to feel for for when you are uh, putting your pin in your waist. All right, so we are going to start with the neckline. So you're going to want to smooth out that fabric, and you are going to want to follow that seam I'm here showing you right there that is along the neckline of your dress form, and you're just going to put the pins in there. Do not tug or stretch or pull on the fabric. You're just going to smooth it out. You don't want it to be pulled because that's going to alter the shape, and you're not going to have an accurate bodice block or sloper if you want to call it a sloper um if you pull and stretch your fabric as you can see here that's you don't want to do that you just want to smooth it out once you are done pinning your pins in the last pin you're going to want to put in is right on the side shoulder seam which you will see momentarily but you're going to put that pin in the opposite direction just so to make sure that your fabric is secure and that it doesn't have any risk of falling out. So it should look something like this. Once you have this done, you're going to want to start the shoulder seam. So all you're going to do is simply feel for that indent where the seam is on the shoulder. You're going to take your pins and just stick them along that line. Once you get to the shoulder, you're going to smooth it out around your shoulder. Here I have shoulder padding in my dress form, so I'm going to have to work around that. You might not have shoulder padding in your dress form, which would make it a lot easier than what I am doing right here. Now you're just going to put pins right in where the plate of the dress form is. It's the metal part right where your arm would be. And you're going to put the pins in right there, smoothing it out, the fabric over it. Now as you can see here, the bust level that we have drawn out is not going to be aligned. It's not going to be straight. That's okay. We're moving the dart down underneath the bust, so it's going to drop that down. Once you get your pins all the way around to the side seam on your dress form, just start pinning along that seam. You can see here, if I lift it up, it's clearly there, you can feel it with your hands, and just put the pins in along the side of that. Now just like we did with the front, we're going to look, feel for the waist sink, and we're just going to put a pin right there in the middle of the waistband. Once we have this, we are ready to draw in the dart and finish up drawing all the lines for our bodice drape. So the first thing we're going to do is we are actually going to mark where the princess seam is. This is where we're going to put our dart. So you're going to put a pin right there so you can feel for it when you're moving the fabric over top of it. Now just lay out your fabric and you're going to take your hand just like this and smooth it out until you feel that pin. Then take your pencil and just mark it right there on your fabric. Once you have this marked, you're going to repeat the same process on the other side. Just smooth out your fabric from the center front, feel for that pin, and then mark it. Now we're going to connect these two marks, so just take a pin and pin through both marks. You don't want to pull it too tight, so make sure you just pin it where you have those marks. This will make sure that it's not too tight, but it's still fitted and comfortable for you wear if you were making a fitted garment. Now we are going to remove that pin from the apex, and we are going to pinch right where the apex is, and we're going to put the pin in there. This will help us to shape our dart, and it will help us to keep the dart in place. Now we are simply just going to fold the dart over to the side towards the center and we're just going to crease the fabric so we know where the dart lays on both sides. Make sure you crease it pretty well because you want the crease on the inside to be very prominent so you know exactly where to pin your fabric. 
Once you have that crease and you can see it here, you're going to take your pins and you're going to simply pin them in. If you want to mark that crease before you pin, you can go ahead and do that as well or you can do it after you put the pins in. Once the pins are in, you're going to mark it on the other side as well, just following the pins on the dress form. Now we're going to just cut off the excess fabric on the bottom, leave it maybe around 2 inches of fabric, and then you're going to cut where you're in the center of the princess seam panel, that is between the center the princess seam and the side seam. Don't cut all the way up through the line. As you can see here, I already drew a line so you could have a gauge of where to put it, but you don't want to cut through the waist. Once you have that cut, you're going to feel for your waistband again and you're going to draw a line in your waistband. Draw that all the way across, fold your dart over, feel for the waistband in the front as well, now your waistband in the front is going to be lower than the waistband in the back. That is normal, that is how your body is made. Once you have that dart drawn on the one side, you're going to fold it over and you're going to repeat the process on the other side. Once you have this done, it is time to start drawing the lines on the side of the dress form and around the arm and continuing to the shoulder and the neckline. Now following that same seam that you can feel with your finger, you're just going to draw right in the indent of that side seam just so you have an idea. And I would go ahead and cross mark or draw the lines a little bit longer just so you know where the intersection of each line is. This will be important and helpful when you are uh, truing the lines is what it's called, but you're really just straightening out the lines. You're going to continue doing that into the arm plate. You're going to want to make sure you draw this line right where the arm plate and the fabric meet. It'll be an indent as well that you can feel with your fingers. If the fabric covers it and you can't see it, you'll be able to feel that sink. Again, I have shoulder padding, so it's going to look a little bit goofy on mine, but we're going to go and fix that later. Now that you have that drawn, you can again just follow the sink in the shoulder and draw that all the way across. Next we're going to fix the neckline, maybe about a half inch above where the neckline would be. Just cut that off and you're going to make little clips around that neckline. Make sure you do not cut into your pattern or into the neckline. Just little incisions to help loosen up the fabric to help make it easier when you are drawing this line and smoothing out the fabric. Once you've got that done, you're going to continue the same process, just drawing where that line meets the seam and you're going to feel for the indent and just keep on trucking. Make sure you do cross those lines so you have a nice point where you know your lines meet. Next, you're going to take it off the dress form. Make sure to keep your dart pins in place because we are going to be evening out these lines and we need those darts in to start. You're going to be using a very form curve for this. If you do not have a very form curve, I do recommend you getting one for doing things like this because your waist is not a straight line and if you, you use a straight ruler, it might not come out as perfect. You can probably use a straight ruler and just get decent results, but I prefer the very form. It makes things a lot easier. So as you can see here, I just lined up the cross marks where uh, the lines intersect and I just drew my new line. Once you get that done, you're going to fold the dart over to the other side and you're going to repeat the process. The very form curve for this should be going towards the center. Once we undo that dart, we'll be uh, pointing the very form curve into the dart so we will be angling it slightly different in a second but first we're going to take care of these straight lines and that would be the side seam connect those uh, cross marks and then you're going to do the same on the shoulder connect where those lines meet these might not line up with your actual lines you drew so do not worry about it that is normal as you can see here my shoulder is curved but that is not the line that we need 
And once we get that done, we will be taking out the pins in our bust. Once you've got those pins out, you're going to want to draw a straight line in the middle of your dart. So right where your apex was and right where those uh, lines meet, you just draw a straight line in between them. Once you get that straight line done, you're going to want to even out your dart legs. So the dart legs are where your dart is fold and to the center. So you have two dart legs. As you can see here, not even so you're evening them out. So you always want to even your dart with the dart leg that is towards the center of your garment. So towards the center front. As you see here, I'm just moving my very form curve until it matches both points. And then I am drawing my line. I'm going to be doing the same thing on the other side. I'm going to match it up on that cross mark on the end and right where the dart meets on the other side. Before you do this, make sure that your dart is even. My dart legs were even, so it didn't, wasn't a problem. But if you do this before your dart legs are even out, it can cause you to have to go back and do that. So make sure that your dart legs are even. My dart leg, I believe, was an inch and a quarter. And the other one was an inch and a quarter as well. Once you get those dart legs evened out, you're going to want to draw the lines to the apex. So the next step we're going to do is add some E in the... So, and these measurements are standard industry measurements, so this is what you're going to do for every single basic block or pattern you do. You're going to go an inch down from the side seam right under the armpit and you're going to go a half an inch out. Again, this is for ease, this is for comfort, and since this is a basic block, we're just going to uh, braid it right back into the waistline. So this is a fitted basic block, so there's no need to like extend it out. But again, depending on the variation in the clothing you're making, your ease could go way out if it was loose fitting or it could go in if it was a corset or yada yada yada. For the shoulder, it's typically a fourth to a half an inch of ease. As you can see here, I'm going to have to go inwards because of my shoulder pads. It ended up altering the fit a little bit. And you're going to mark a quarter of an inch inwards as well in the middle of your uh, shoulder. Uh, not shoulder, sorry. In the middle of your arm seam. And you're going to want to use a French curve to do this. Um, it's going to allow you to get the easiest and the best a line for this so you're just gonna line it up on your darts and as you can see here I'm shifting it over just a little bit because of my shoulder pads it altered the fit uh, yours wouldn't look like this as you can see my uh, arm seam is very curved whereas if you didn't have shoulder pads in it it wouldn't be this curved so I'm just adjusting it real quick here and then I'm going to draw my line and we're going to move on to the neckline. The neckline, you're going to use your bust so over and lined up as well on your bust marks and on your line. Again, your lines may not line up with your actual ruler measurement. Okay, it is normal. But once you get that line done, your bodice block or super is all finished. Then you can cut it out. Be sure to mark what size it is and what the pattern actually is so you know in the future. Alright, once you have that done, your, oops, once you have it done, your bodice block is all done. Or you could call this a sloper as well, depending on what term you want to use. So when you are done with this, you would want to transfer it to paper because fabric distorts and changes over time paper typically does not. I do recommend using like a sturdy stiff paper, but if you don't have a sturdy stiff paper, craft paper will work as well. You like the brown craft paper, you know. But I do recommend transferring this to another paper. But once you have this done, this is your bodice block. Now you can change the dart and manipulate what your patterns look like based on using this pattern block, which Spoilers will be future videos. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more fashion sewing content. And I will see you guys all next time or next week for part two of the bodice block. We will be doing the back. So stay tuned and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you will know when that video drops. So I'll see you guys all next week.